Hello students. Today we learn about module 5 of the syllabus which is digital signal processors. In this module we will learn primarily about the DSP architecture, the DSP hardware units, fixed point format, floating point format, IEEE formats, fixed point digital signal processors and floating point digital signal processors examples and finally the implementation of an FIR and IAR filter using fixed point systems. The objective of this module is to introduce the basics of digital signal processing that is implemented on to a processor. We get to learn about the processor architecture, the hardware units. We are able to investigate the formats, namely fixed and floating points. And finally, we can get to illustrate it with a real time example. Now, digital signal processing architecture is little different than that of the regular microprocessors and microcontrollers. The need for implementing equations is the primary distinguishing factor. For example, we have to implement equations like finding the fast Fourier transform. We may be doing some sort of filtering or implementing the convolution as well as correlations. Here we need to work on data which may be arriving on the real time basis or may be processed in the form of blocks. Therefore, there is a need for a distinct architecture to deal with these situations. Now, traditionally, we have learned about the von Neumann architecture, which contains a single shared memory, which is used both for saving the programs as well as the data. Now, this single memory will have a single bus associated with it. Now, the same bus will be used when you're accessing the programs as well as the data. Now, in this arrangement, the processor will execute programs in a serial fashion. That means that first it has to fetch the instruction and then it proceeds for execution. The CPU is the one which controls these operations. So it fetches it from the memory, decodes it to find out what is the nature of operation and then proceeds for the execution. Now here the problem is that unless the present instruction has completely executed, you cannot proceed for the next instruction. Now as you know in an instruction, we have two parts. The first part is called as the opcode and the second part is called as the operand. Opcode primarily tells what is the nature of the operation and the CPU knows what to do when it sees this particular code. Operand tells which operand, operand is involved in this particular operation. In other words, from where the operands have to be fetched? Is it coming from memory? Is it coming from IO device? Or it is coming from some other peripheral? The current instruction once completed, this will proceed for the further instruction. So at a time, only one instruction or piece of data can be retrieved. 
Now, since the processor is proceeding in the serial fashion, it is understandable that all the other units should be lying in a wait state. The von Neumann architecture operates the cycles of fetching and execution. First, the instruction is fetched from memory. Then it is decoded by using the program control unit. And finally, the instruction is executed. Now, whenever the instruction requires the movement of data, like to and from memory, then first the current instruction has to be completed and then only it proceeds to the next instruction. In von Neumann, the processor is facing the bottleneck mainly due to having a single shared memory that is utilized both for program as well as data. Now, certain amount of speed improvement is possible by increasing the speed of devices like bus, memory and the computation units, but this cannot improve the performance significantly. Here is the general microprocessor which is based on the von Neumann architecture. The blocks shown here are the arithmetic unit, input output devices, the common program and data memory which requires one address bus and one data bus. There is an address generator responsible for generating the addresses and there is program control unit which dec decides the sequence of execution. Let us discuss now about the Harvard architecture. In order to improve the speed of execution of digital signal processing, the digital signal processor incorporates what is called as the Harvard architecture. This originated from Mark I relay based computers built by IBM in the year 18, 1944 at Harvard University. Now this particular processor has the characteristic that there are two separate memory spaces. One which is for the program code and one which is used for the data. Now having two separate memory spaces will require two corresponding address buses as well as two data buses for each of them. Now in this way the program memory as well as data memory have their own connections to the respective program memory bus and data memory bus. Now this has the advantage that the hardware processor can fetch the program instructions and data parallelly. So at the same time they can be accessed and this the program memory bus and using the data memory bus. So since they have their own program and memory data bus, both of them can be simultaneously accessed. In addition to having Harvard architecture, the other unit that is commonly found in digital signal processors is called as the multiplier and accumulator. Now this comes from the reason that most DSP equations involve multiplication followed by addition and this operation has to be done repeatedly. Hence a dedicated hardware unit called as MAC will be beneficial. So, now example is a digital filtering operation where MAC will come to the picture because once again we have the same operations of multiply followed by addition. The final unit that we have to have is a shift unit. A shifter will be useful to perform what is called as scaling operations. Whenever we are using fixed point implementation, there we require to scale up or scale down the operands to prevent the condition which is called as overflow. 
so right shift can be used to shift the values to the right and this is going to scale down the operand if scaling up is required we perform the left shift operation here is the architecture which is based on what is called as the harvard architecture very clearly we observe that there is a separate program memory and there is a separate data memory and the respective buses called as program memory bus program memory address bus and program memory data bus similarly data memory has its own address bus and it has its own data bus as in the previous case we have the alu we have input output devices we have address generators that has to handle both program as well as data memory and we have the program control unit responsible for sequencing the program the additional units we have is the multiplier slash accumulator or mac unit along with the shift unit let us compare the executions of the two architectures first we discuss about von neumann architecture the first step in execution of instruction is the fetch cycle in this fetch cycle the op code is fetched from memory the control unit decodes that instruction to determine the nature of the operation to be performed next comes the execute cycle based on the decoded information execution will modify the contents of the register or the memory once this is complete the process will fetch the next instruction and it continues the processor operates one instruction at a time and it is executing in a serial fashion hence it is slow now to improve the speed of the processor operation the harvard architecture takes advantage of a common digital signal processor in which one register holds the filter coefficient while the other register holds the data to be processed the execution of fetch and execute are overlapped this overlap execution is called as pipelining operation the digital signal processor performs one execution cycle while also fetching the next instruction hence the processing speed is dramatically improved the figures here show this particular scheme in the first figure we can see that the execution cycle for von neumann performs the operation of fetch in a serial fashion unless the first instruction completes the second cannot start in the harvard architecture based execution we can see that the execute and the fetch are performed in parallel so this nature of execution is called as pipeline execution the harvard architecture is preferred for most digital signal processors because the requirement of most dsp algorithms as an example filtering convolution fft will need repetitive arithmetic operations which mostly include multiplications additions memory access and a large amount of data which will be received and has to be processed by the cpu now for simple applications which do not have to depend on such complicated architecture you may go with a simple microcontroller if your timing requirement is not very rigid then von neumann may serve the purpose it is simple it will cost less and definitely it can 
solve the problem for very simple applications. Thank you.